because there was this denial from our society that same sex intercourse does not exist in india or hamare yahan aisa hota nahi do you think that the indian education system inculcating sex education as a part of the curriculum will help the sexual minorities that inspired me that maybe i should come back and try to do something like this in pune hello everyone myself athar deshmukh from vishwakarma expression hub every year we have this unique initiative called expression of pride where we invite some prominent personalities from lgbtqia plus community a few years ago we started this journey in order to represent the hardships faced by lgbtqia plus community and today we are having the fourth edition of expression of pride this podcast will be featuring the director of bindu queer rights foundation mr bindu madhav khire hello everyone expressions of pride is an annual interview series where we celebrate the scraping of section 377 by interviewing various lgbtqia plus activists who create awareness about the issues faced by this community so a hearty welcome to you thank you and thank you so much for joining us today in this fourth edition of expressions of pride also sir let's start with your introduction How did Bindu Madhav Khire come to be an activist? It's a long story. Uh, I graduated in 1990, and till then there was no internet. You wouldn't hear the words LGBT anywhere. And so during my college days, when I realized that I'm attracted to men, obviously I felt it was wrong. i come from a very conservative religious family so obviously there was a lot of internal homophobia and it took a long time for me to come to terms with my sexuality in fact at one stage i had got married to a woman and the marriage did not last but luckily for me because i had done my engineering in computer science i was able to go to the us on h1b visa and that is where i came in touch with a lgbt group called tricorn in san francisco and i started volunteering for them and that's how i started coming to terms with my sexuality i my first attendance at a lgbt pride walk was in san francisco pride walk and that inspired me that maybe i should come back and try to do something like this in pune so that was that was the beginning so sir can you define lgbtqia plus for our audience well our gender and sexuality are divided into three major components one is the anatomy whether you have the reproductive systems of a male or a female so generally we have what is called as a binary system our laws are binary made for men or women or for all but it's not really quite that simple there are some people who are born with ambiguous reproductive systems we call them as intersex so you could have you baby is born with male anatomy baby is born with female anatomy and you could have a spectrum where you have baby is born with some to some extent ambiguous genitals and these are called as intersex so from the lgbt iqa i stands for the intersex component the second dimension is of gender generally we believe that if i have the anatomy of a male my gender will be male that is i will see the world and respond to it the way a male does if it's a woman biological woman then she will have a gender of a woman so she will see and respond to the world as a woman so there is a synchronization between your anatomy and gender it's called as cis gender c i s cis gender but there are some people who have a gender different from their anatomy so they are transgender persons both male to female or female to male so that t stands for transgender and the third dimension is sexual orientation whether you are emotionally and sexually attracted to only men only women to both or neither so l stands for lesbians women attracted to women 
और वीमेन लविंग वीमेन जी स्टैंड फॉर गे मैन लविंग मैन और इट समाइम्स यूज फॉर वीमेन ऑल्सो बी स्टैंड फॉर बाय सेक्शुअलिटी बींग अट्रैक्टेड टू बोथ ए स्टैंड फॉर ए सेक्शुअलिटी वेयर अ पर्सन इज नॉट अट्रैक्टेड टू एनी वन सो एल जी बी टी आई ए द क्यू क्वियर पार्ट कैन बी यूज इन डिफरेंट फॉर्म्स एट टाइम्स इट्स यूज एज अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ ऑल सेक्शुअल एंड जेंडर माइनॉरिटीज लाइक आदोत इंटरनेशनल पुणे क्वियर फिल्म फेस्टिवल इट इम्प्लाइज एल जी बी टी आई एवरीथिंग एट टाइम्स इट्स यूज बाय अ पर्सन हु इज नॉट येट क्वाइट श्योर अबाउट देयर जेंडर एंड सेक्शुअलिटी सो इट्स क्वेश्चनिंग सो इट कुड बी यूज एज क्यू एंड प्लस इज अ सॉर्ट ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव ऑफ दो जेंडर एंड सेक्शुअलिटीज वी रियली डू नॉट नो अबाउट or those which fall outside this minority gender and sexual spectrum so that's how lgbtiqa plus is used thank you sir so sir moving on yes. uh, can you tell us about summer party trust your very own non profit organization and how has it been over the years uh well summer party i decided to form summer party trust after i came back to india i came back early 2000 came out to my parents and uh, it was a huge trauma for them but eventually after they accepted uh i decided that i would continue working in the it company and try to continue running support groups for lgbt but i quickly realized that i can't do both at the same time and so i decided to quit my it career and focus only on activism and that's where With the help of Amma, with the Ashok Rao Kavi, India's first gay activist, and Hamsa for Trust, Vivek Raj Anand, who is the CEO, with their assistance, I set up a CBO in Pune called Samapathik Trust, and it continued to work till 2019. At that time, I wound up Samapathik Trust, and I formed a Section 8 company, Bindu Queer Rights Foundation, and I work as a director there. I am also the founder. It does more or less the same work, but the legal structure is different. Samapathik was created at a time where we had three major issues one was that being gay being transgender was considered medically as a disorder so medically we had little support most of the psychiatrists were extremely homophobic and transphobic many of them still are the second important issue was the legal issue indian penal code 377 which criminalized even same sex intercourse even between consenting adults in privacy and the third issue was of hiv because there was this denial from our society that same sex intercourse does not exist in india और हमारे यहां ऐसा होता नहीं है पीपल डिड नॉट रियलाइज दैट वेन एच आई वी अराइव इन इंडिया इन मिड एट इज इट स्टार्ट स्पेडिंग इवन थ्रू मैन हुड इंटरकोर्स विथ मैन सो इट कुड बी गे मैन इट कुड बी ट्रांसजेंडर्स ऑल दी सेक्शुअल माइनॉरिटीज हुक्शुअल रिलेशन वेर नॉट वेर टैबू वेर नॉट एक्सेप्टेड बाई सोसाइटी एच आई वी स्टार्ट स्पेडिंग वेरी फास्ट and there was little information and awareness of safe sex uh, issues uh, amongst the population so working on hiv working on legal issues and medically dispelling the fact that lgbt being lgbt is not a disease or a disorder it is normal variant of sexuality and gender so these three were our main areas of work this is definitely a stepping stone yes you So, so moving on uh, we know that you travel to america uh, for your job so what is the difference between india and america are people there more open about homosexuality and what did you know so there's no one answer to it this you know if you look at the lgbt community in pune mumbai and if you look at the lgbt community in, let's say in bhagalpur or patna in bihar there is a huge difference of the amount of people who are out the kind of environment where they could have pride walks similarly in us people have this idea that in us you know uh, everything is accepted that's that's not true 
you have the east coast and west coast certain city like you know uh, states like california or new york where is relatively open but you have certain states which are extremely conservative and not very inclusive of lgbt at all so there is a huge range from full acceptance to extremely uh, conservative culture similarly just like in india so this idea that everything is hunky dory and everything is okay in the us that's not true at all so sir moving on uh, how difficult was it for you to finally accept your sexuality and you know not force yourself into being someone that you know like since you came out in the 90s the 1995 it was very difficult it was very difficult because we never had these words lgbt in newspapers i didn't know who i knew i was attracted to men loving men but i did not know what to call it the word homosexual gay was not used then but the word homosexual was unknown because there was never any news of homosexual samalingi no way of knowing it was only when in college when i was a member of the british council library that i started reading medical books that i realized who i was and i landed in a major depression in fact it was i so started hitting myself and worried what my parents would think of me if i were to come out that in my third year i of the 11 subjects i failed in 10 so the third year of engineering was a mess so i lost a year and my parents couldn't figure out what what's wrong with you you know they asked me is it that you are gambling away money are you fallen in bad company or is it you know you have taken to boozing what, what is it that's making you you know lose all track from your career and i could not tell them who i was luckily i was able to come out of that depression but it was only after my divorce that and the lucky part that i was in the us and in california and uh, in santa clara which is near san jose and san francisco that i was able to come or reach out to an indian lgbt group tricon and that's was my reward but it was extremely traumatic yes Okay, so uh, moving on, like, can you describe any current project uh, or initiative that you're working on? Right now. Uh, yes. Uh, well, uh, last year I worked. Uh, I published a book on for medical practitioners. The issue is that this issue is not taught in medical colleges. So most of the MBBS doctors or MD doctors have very little knowledge about the issue. and since there were no books for medical practitioners i wrote one uh, uh, working together bridging the gap between lgbtiq and medical practitioners and the pdf of that is freely available for download uh, i distributed a couple of hundred as complimentary copies to various psychiatrist departments in maharashtra uh, this year in june i released a handbook on lgbt inclusion in the workplace for corporates because as laws are changing more and more corporates are making their companies more and more lgbt inclusive as you are aware that corporates have a focus also of giving parity to women yes. then as a part of diversity and inclusion they have also started working on uh, people people with disabilities pwd so that people with physical disability should also find a place in uh, corporate physical or mental disabilities the third thing they have started doing as the laws are changing is that they also want corporates to be lgbt friendly that there is no discrimination uh, irrespective of the gender and sexuality of the employee or prospective employee so i wrote a handbook for them which is again uh, the pdf is freely download uh, available for download right now i have started writing a handbook for colleges and schools for L- uh, lgbt inclusion in colleges and schools so i i have more and more schools approaching me that how do we start about lgbt inclusion we could have a teacher who is very good and who comes out or who approaches us to be hired but who belongs to the lgbt community especially trans community or we we could have a student who will come could come to us and say you know ma'am i have not told anyone but i am trans or i am gay and we need to have the resources we need to have skilled counselors we need to have maybe infrastructure facilities for example 
a special washroom for trans uh, students and we need help and or to understand the current legal policies help in framing policies so i am writing a handbook for colleges and schools for lgbt inclusion in educational institutions that is what i am doing at the focusing on in and at other levels i am also doing sensitization awareness session and uh, helping communities in various cities to start small support groups and currently because of the changes in laws i am helping transgenders to apply and procure transgender ids and certificates from the collector office which they can now get as per the new law so I've, I've, we have got them for about 100 transgenders in the past year uh, year or two continuing with our interview yes. what is it about this society that hinders people from coming up? i feel that although the laws have changed or and although things are changing in the urban areas i honestly feel that people should be taught sex gender sexuality very early on before their misconceptions get formed or get nurtured unfortunately that has not happened and so by the time people come to understand about lgbt they already have a conservative environment which has done it damage and to undo that damage and to start anew is far more difficult and which is why even now you find it very difficult for people to come out in many cases i am seeing that people are not even aware of who they are the number of gay men who come to me thinking that they are transgenders it's shocking because they do not realize that your sexual orientation is a totally different dimension from who you identify as whether man as or a woman for gay men you identify gender as a man it's just that you are attracted to men but they don't understand that they feel that if i am attracted to men then i must be a woman so i must be transgender so am i like the trutya panthis i see on the street so it is at this basic level that we have no information at all and we see that happening even in cities like pune mumbai so you can well imagine for a gay man from a very rural area having no access uh, to maybe internet no access to support groups it would be still as traumatic for him as it was for me 30 years ago so we have a long long way to go despite the good changes that are happening in the metropolis so moving on uh, with the same topic what kind of rights does the Indian constitution give to the LGBTQIA plus as of today? And how long do you think it will take to treat this straight and the people from the LGBTQIA plus community as equals? Well, we need to understand that the constitution does not, the constitution of India does not directly grant any specific right to LGBT as such. It has part three of the constitution which provides fundamental rights uh, of maybe expression or um, article 4, 14, 19, 21. The question is of interpreting the constitution to see whether these rights also apply to LGBT. So when we say article 14 or article 19 freedom of expression. What does freedom of expression mean? It's not absolute. It has um, uh, uh, certain limitations. So, for example, people can't just do a nanga nach on the street. But does it mean that a gay adult man can have voluntarily intercourse with another willing gay man? That is something which either the parliament will have to make a law and state yes or no. Or the constitution will have to decide. Now, the IPC already had in the penal code the, uh, 377 clause, which made it illegal, even between consenting adults. So, the question was if you are talking of freedom of expression with certain limitations on the grounds of, let's say, morality, is a gay man loving another man infringing that morality? Or is it government, it's none of society's or government's business as to what I do with my boyfriend behind closed doors. 
that is for the supreme court or the high courts to dwell upon and come to a conclusion and that is what the supreme court came to a conclusion in 2018 that ipc 377 violates the constitution as far article 14 equality before law equal protection before law article 19 freedom of expression and dignity of life article 21 it violates this fundamental right and which is why to that extent the 377 code uh, stands uh, is unconstitutional now so uh, dr baba saheb has uh, has created such a wonderful constitution the framework are really lovely i mean we need to thank him again and again for this lovely constitution which is why the courts have been able to interpret it so liberally to make sure that his vision that everyone irrespective of whether it be caste or religion have a place of dignity in society also means to include those communities which may not be explicitly mentioned in the constitution if you look at this gay marriage case uh, same sex marriage case the hearings concluded about 2 months ago in the supreme court again the question is is marriage a fundamental right there is no explicit mention in the constitution of india that i have a fundamental right of marriage and i am talking of a, ma a marriage between a man and woman is it a fundamental right if it is then obviously two men should also have the right to marry that is being that was debated in the court and we await a judgment we hope to get within the next 3 months or so but the idea is that the constitution is what we call as a living organism in the sense it evolves it's dynamic and we are i'm happy that with very progressive judges like the chief justice of india dr dhananjay chandrachud and others they are really looking at lgbt as you know a community which has been disempowered and that needs to be you know given equal rights i do not know what the judgment will be no one none of us knows that but if you even look at the 377 judgment if you look at justice indu malhotra what she said that there has been an injustice done on lgbt community and that needs to be addressed the society needs to uh, apologize to the lgbt community so yes we have very liberal judges also we i uh, guess there are conservative judges also because we had uh, a, a judgment against us on 377 in 2013 in the supreme court but i am happy to see that the constitution is being liberally looked at to consider uh, us as also equal citizens yes thank you sir thank you sir uh, so so we all know that we have started a revolutionary change uh, marking the start of something incredible so so what more changes would you want to make in the society so that the struggles that you faced uh, when you came out uh, the young generation will not face those struggles well there are quite a lot of things yet to be done we we see a lot of activism uh in certain areas but that activism is very superficial i am being critical of lgbt activists now uh we see a lot of it happening on social media films and everything fine great that 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 has to be an exposure but we have very few lgbt activists who actually work on the field giving lectures on lgbt rights is one thing and being out there to support let's say trans person who is thrown out of the house or a gay man who has been evicted uh, for being feminine or someone who is ragged because of for being feminine so there are very few out there and i think that continues to be a big problem when it comes to taking the movement forward the other issue uh, uh, that i see is that coming back again to that previous uh, comment that i made we have to teach the society from a young age to be accommodated you know trying to talk to a 50 year old person of my age and telling them to get sensitized and aware of lgbt is too late 
which is why the older generation uh, members of the society parents it difficult for them to someone who has grown in a conservative environment to undo all of that they have learned and to start re renew uh, yes. you know a new a fresh it's extremely difficult for them so i think it is education 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 and pushing the government and institutions to become lgbt inclusive and tolerate no discrimination and this is going to be a long walk i mean the question that you had asked which i did not answer last question was when do you think that will be well it's not going to be so early it's going to be a very very long time if you if you look at women's rights would you say women have arrived if you look at dalit rights would you say that dalits have arrived no and these movements have been happening for decades and decades and decades lgbt movement is something is hardly to three three decades old and the kind of uh, taboo it's the uh, of lgbt in the society it's going to be centuries for the best in the that you are simply trying to hasten it that the duration would be less so we in case it's let's say it's going to be two centuries let's try to bring it out to a century yeah. So, sir, moving on, uh, do you think that the Indian education system, inculcating sex education as a part of their curriculum, will help the sexual minorities uh, to come in terms with their uh, gender yes, identity? It will. It will. The problem is that is sex education taught in schools? Most uh, schools do not teach sex education. even if it is part of the curriculum teachers just flip the pages and move on they are too embarrassed to talk on this issue unfortunately they don't even try to get doctors or someone else from outside to talk to the students so on the one hand you have a crowd who talks of lgbt are aware of lgbt but if you ask them basic questions on reproductive systems they will not be able to answer about their own anatomy leave alone anything else so we have this very confused society right now that things are changing rapidly with globalization and internet access you know every term that is a new term that's coming out in the us we are very eager to adapt that term here but at the fundamental level are we strong at the very basic level of very logical thinking level i don't think so we are eager to change but we are not really introspecting we are just eager to grab and bring everything from outside and call it our own but our fundamentals remain very very weak so uh, so the solution is not just included in exactly in the end we have to there are no shortcuts yes. you have to work from the ground up you try to first understand your own anatomy your own feelings your own attitude introspect on it and do what you feel is wrong try to understand what is right and in doing so you learn from everyone else and it does not happen overnight one session on lgbt is not going to change you one session on sex education is also not going to change people's attitude so it is going to be time it takes time and there are it, it is not something you learn by rote it is something that you have to think so sir moving on um... as you said in your ted talk why come out to others what is this crowd or pride about coming in terms with your own sexuality and what is the freedom that is least to be well that this is the most difficult question to answer uh, because the straight community has no understanding of what it means to be in your mental prison for years and years and years without an outlet and then you decide to step out a prison that society has created for you and you have willingly stepped into you have willingly decided that although i can open this door i'm not going to open it i'm going to stay in this prison because i am afraid that if i step out i will be torn to pieces and that kind of suffocating stifling atmosphere that you live in day in day out can really crush you it's like for those who never come out it's like a life imprisonment that they will never be able to be really free despite 
the world believing they are free their families feel they are free their friends believe they are free the world believe they are free and yet they are the only ones who know that i am in prison forever that 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 it is extremely painful suffocating and to suddenly take that not suddenly sorry gradually take one step at a time to actually step out breathe that fresh air not to be afraid of who looks at you what they would think of you what they would say to you it's an emotion that has to be experienced and once you experience that freedom it's only a couple of people who are who go back in the closet 99.99 would never do that the only people who go back to the closet are those who feel that the challenge that they face on stepping out although it's a, there is freedom the risk involved in being free are high they would rather feel safe if they were back in the closet married and being in a traditional family but this is yes there are cases of that going back in the closet too but most of them once they have experienced that freedom will not want to step back into that cage it's really liberating to come out yes so it was truly a insightful session and i think it is very crucial for the society to understand all that you said all the struggles that you faced during so sir so, uh, concluding uh, so what what message would you like to give our viewers and uh, all the young people out there who are uh, who want to come out uh yes a uh, very important question since our uh, viewership would be of young uh, yes. uh, uh, college students a if you are lgbtqa do not consider yourself to be inferior you are as equal as everybody else you are normal you should not consider yourself to be abnormal in any way or inferior in any way thirdly what i have seen is that during my times there were less temptations because it was a very closed world now i had severe challenges but they were of a different kind for the newer generation you have severe challenges but of a different nature you have various apps where you could date a stranger very quickly and you know and the number of incidences of blackmail and extortion that i am seeing are horrifying i would advise all the young lgbt community members that they should a focus on their studies and career and hobbies also they need to have at least one good hobby which will help them long term because that's very good for your mental health they should be careful in forming liaisons or relationships not because it's wrong but if you are not out if you are not comfortable who with who you are you are more likely to be damaged because if you are not comfortable with who you are you will be in a relationship where you feel angry with another person tempting you so that's not a healthy relationship if you are not careful about sexual relationship practice safe sex you the number of 20 somethings who are getting hiv now is horrifying because they are you uh, know they are not practicing safe sex and lastly if you are not out and you face blackmail or extortion you are less likely to confront it you are more likely to give in so they need to seek safe spaces like uh, in pune yutak is running queer katta so these are public spaces where you get friends who are to openly uh, talk about who they are do experience sharing so you need to be careful and focus on your priorities and last but not the least don't be in a hurry to come out i know it the you want to come out as soon as possible but each of us will have a different kind of family background some of them you are aware that yeah they would generally accept it but there would be some who may be very antagonistic about the whole thing so if worst case scenario you are thrown out of the house 
and you cannot fend for yourself you are not employed you are vulnerable dependent on someone that would be a bad situation to be in so my suggestion is you complete your studies you get a job where you are prepared for the worst case scenario mentally you are strong physically you have taken care of yourself that would be the point to come out just because your friends have come out doesn't mean that you have to come out or giving to that pressure so take your time get into the right company and angels like mine uh, activists like me are willing to support you in whatever way possible that is really great advice sir. especially the thing where you said you have to get comfortable first yes, yes. look around about like, be financially independent or uh, yes things like that. because no one is going to respect if you, if you are dependent yes. on anyone else right, period that, that i totally agree with that uh, so sir thank you so much for joining us today thank you uh, Yeah, so we are done with the interview.